I'm Fernando Fernandez for Fern TV, and uh, we're here at the Toronto International Film Festival 2016, and we're here at the red carpet for the movie 76. So, Rita, uh, tell us a little bit about the role in your uh, in this, this film. Okay, I play the heavily pregnant wife of a military officer, Dewa, and the name of my character is Susie. And um, the film is set against the backdrop of a very um, well. A 1976 military coup that happened in my country and um, the assassination of the head of state um, basically is a love story based on true events and um, it's a story that follows the journey of this military officer who's been implicated in this coup and you have his heavily pregnant well fiance who tries all to extricate him from this web of lies and you know controversy and yeah so you just see the, the, fo uh, the film the story following that journey. Yeah. What was one of the biggest challenges in this film for you? Wow. Um, first of all, we filmed uh, for six months, and uh, which is not very common back in my industry, and we we weren't filming in very you know comfortable conditions. You know, so that in itself was very challenging. You know, so and um, we had to find ways to still make it work and remain in character and not get out of character. You know, and just ignore the surroundings. You know, and just focus on the job and get it done. Yeah. Yeah, and I had to gain a lot of weight for my role. <laughs> yeah, I had to, yeah, you know, so, yeah. Chidi, tell us a little bit about uh, what it feels like to be here at the Toronto International Film Festival with um, the city to city platform for the the country of Nigeria, of course, and, and their films being shown here. Oh, it feels great to be here, you know, finally being able to get um, this kind of recognition on the global stage really does feel great. I mean, I thank um, the organizers, the city to city initiative, I think, is an awesome initiative. You know, there's a lot of work going on back in Nigeria, in Hollywood, and on the African continent as far as movies are concerned. Um, I think. Uh, we do require a stage like this to be able to showcase what we have, you know. A lot of times the stories emanating out of Africa have been told through the eyes of Hollywood. So I think it's about time Africans began to tell our own stories through our own eyes and then telling the world what we think of ourselves, you know. So and a platform like this, the city to city platform and this kind of showcase is really necessary and what we need, you know, to make that happen. You know, so this will open up the doors, open up the distribution outlets, open up investors. I mean, it's a whole world of opportunities out there. Uh, tell us a little bit about your role in the film. Oh, my role? Okay. I, I was pre pretty much the antagonist in the movie. So um, this was the dis disgruntled guy. You know, um, this is the other side of activism, you know. So sometimes you have to understand and appreciate where people are coming from when they go down an activist route. And uh, this guy had grouses that he needed to carry out. And uh, set in a very contentious time of our history in Nigeria, um, this guy was the guy who just had to make change happen and make it happen now, irrespective of how it was going to affect the country and every other person, you know. So pretty much the, the antagonist. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about uh, your role in the film. I played the role of Dewa, uh, Officer Dewa, and um, he happened to be uh, an intelligent officer in the movie and then he got roped into a coup by his childhood friend and he was trying to like balance the, you know, the, the family, because he just got married, like freshly wed and his wife is pregnant, so he's trying to balance that equation between his family and his work and of course there's a bit of conflict in it. I mean, cool during the military regime is um, a very, very strong thing that can lead to, you know, um, um, the detro, it can lead to, you know, killing. So basically that's what happened to him. Uh, tell us, where did this, uh, the story for this film, where did it come from? Or how, what inspired you to make this film? Yes, uh, uh, it was inspired by a whole lot of events. Uh, first, I have a relationship with this story. I was three when this event occurred. And uh, it didn't uh, sink in. As, I mean, I was still a kid and I was fortunate. The family, the, the, my apartment at the time, our apartment, belonged to the family of the ringleader of this very coup. 
So somehow as I started growing up and uh, we witnessed what was going to be uh, like uh, 16 years of military coups in the country, you know, you started asking questions. Why will this keep happening? But when in 1998 I had an accident and in Bauchi State and I was accommodated by soldiers, it gave me the opportunity to mingle with them, to stay within the barracks and, and began, I, I started seeing the army from a different perspective and my thought got stared in the direction of the people they leave behind when these things happen. So that was actually what inspired this story. I started looking at the lives of officers in the barrack. Fortunately or unfortunately, they are uh, they've come to terms with the fact that their husbands will go out and, and, and then not come back. But it's difficult to come to terms with the fact that your husband will be publicly executed by his own people for something that he did. So that's why the, you know, I started thinking in that direction and uh, you know, that's actually what inspired, inspired the story. Being an executive producer of this film, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the challenges you had to go through to make this happen. Oh yeah, um, of course one of the biggest problems in Nigeria is having, getting the finance. There are lots of people with lots of money, but not a lot of money is invested in entertainment. Um, so that was a major issue. Of course, this is the first movie ever to be shot in a Nigerian military barracks. The Nigerian army doesn't take very kindly to film. Uh, so it was a major challenge to get them to understand the need to tell this story. Of course, um, it's a movie based on true events. Um, and so the only way you can have authenticity is if you have, um, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, a military kind of environment. Uh, trying to recreate 1976 is not easy, but uh, the good thing about Nigeria is that most of the military barracks still look like they were back in 1976 anyway. So to that extent, we're quite lucky. Um, having said that, we shot on film, which is not usual, um, and shooting on film was again because of the need to have that authenticity. Uh, shooting on film was hugely an issue. You can't process any of your films, you have to send it out of the country to process. So people would be surprised to know that the film was shot without any of the rushes being reviewed. So major issues, um, finance, logistics, uh, but we overcame. What, what do you like most about this film? Well, I like the fact that it's, um, it sends a message. Uh, for us as filmmakers, we look to try to get um, the younger generation coming behind us um, uh, informed about things that have passed. I mean, today, of course, anniversary of 9-11. Um, history is important. People need to understand where they're coming from, things that have gone past. So looking 40 years behind, um, we wanted people of this generation to understand you know, what Nigeria was about, uh, the legacy of military coups, and the kind of role that officers' wives had to play. It was a major issue, but most people didn't realize, they didn't understand. Um, and we felt that um, you know, we needed to get people to understand. Our younger generation, when you tell them about Murtala Mohammed, they say, who is he? Um, he was the head of state that was ass assassinated in 1976. So this tells a story, um, and I think it's quite important. Now tell us, how, how does it feel to be here at the Toronto International Film Festival? Oh yeah, it's a major deal. I mean, we all know the A, a festivals or A-plus festivals in the world, um, and Toronto is right up there with them. Uh, for our movie to be here on merit um, is a major testimony to a wonderful cast, a wonderful crew. And of course, um, we've got the spotlight shining on our film. It's not easy, we're just a young team of people very little experience and we're doing something which is international um, so it's a major challenge but you know if you want to be the best you have to work with the best and that's why we're here